All right, everyone, welcome back to the Sooner Scourge. And on today's video, uh, we're beginning one of our new series. Um, we'll do it maybe one, two times a week. Um, but we're going to start going through every single position room uh, for Oklahoma football in the 2023 season. Uh, this is Brody. I'm joined by Jason and Jackson. So starting it off with the wide receiver room, which we'll be talking about in this particular uh, episode, um, I just kind of want to start with Jackson. Uh is the obvious number one receiver Jalil Farouk? I mean, it, that seems kind of obvious, right? I mean, that's the the ex- expectation going into the season because you lost Marvin Mims, obviously, who's going to be at the NFL Combine. He has a chance that he could have shot himself up all the way into the second round. Yeah. And, I mean, so he's going to have high expectations, but I don't know if it's really fair to put a 1,000-yard expectations on Farouk due, due to the depth and the amount of guys that are going to be – rotated in and out throughout the year because when you look at it you have Farouk, Stoops, Bunkley, Shelton, Hester, Gibson, Anderson, DJ DJ Graham all guys that could real realistically play for you and then you have Keon Brown and Jaquez Petaway I'm sure there's some Gavin Freeman so there's like nine guys realistically that could play day one who Brady Andrew Anthony. Andrew Anthony, Andrew Anthony. Yeah. yeah. and but, but my thing, Jackson, I, I, I agree with kind of what y'all said about Farouk being that guy, but uh, my thing that's got to change this year going into the season is yeah. you talked about the depth, Jackson, but we didn't really see the depth last year. They had guys last year that I don't really feel like they got the playing time, and I don't feel like they rotated enough to see those guys. So hope. Well, yeah, like he's not there. Okay, yeah, you froze for a minute, but yeah, I agree. The depth thing, they got to fix that. Um, but for me, I've, you know, I think a lot of people know if they've listened to this podcast for a while. I really like Jalil Farouk. I think he definitely has the potential to be that a thousand yard receiver. I think he has the potential to be a first round draft pick, first second round draft pick. Um, I think he has a potential to be a top wide receiver in college football. So I think the expectation is there. I think he has the tools to be. Uh, that wide receiver won't one, and I think he'll probably be that this year. And then you have Drake Stoops, and I think we all know what we're going to get with Drake Stoops, and uh, he, he'll be a big contributor uh, on this team. And then for me, that wide receiver three, who's the wide receiver three? It, it's pretty up in the air for me. I think it's, uh, you know, Anderson and Gibson, one of them. And um, that to me is pretty interesting. I think Anderson has all the tools, but he was battling injuries last year. Jaden Gibson couldn't really get on the field when he did – it wasn't very much, and he dropped that one pass that probably would have been a touchdown. I don't remember which game that was, but Nebraska. Yeah, and then and then I really like Andrew Anthony. Um, he was at Michigan. I think it, you know his first season or last year, which was not his first season. They were expecting him to be one of their guys. I mean, you look at his stats uh, in his career in Michigan. Uh, his freshman season, uh, he had twelve receptions, two hundred forty-eight yards, and three touchdowns. Um, in, that, oh, sorry. in that freshman season, uh, the majority of his yards, I think he had a 100-yard game with two touchdowns against Michigan State. And then last year, he struggled. So I really think Andrew Anthony can be a guy for the Sooners. I think he could be, you know, that wide receiver three. I think it's between those three um, that, that could compete for that position. Well, let me, let me ask you all this um, because – we saw Mims. We know what Mims is, and we, you see him in the in the combine run that four three eight. Uh, Jackson Brody, this year's team, um, who's going to be that guy to stretch the field? Joe Anthony. I don't. I don't even think that's much a question. He can. He runs for sure a four four. He may run a four. Okay, so you're saying he's the guy to stretch the field, other than Gibson or? I um, think Gibson and Anderson. I think they and then, can stretch the field. And then another guy is. DJ hey, Graham. Well, is he a slot guy? Is he an outside guy? Well, we don't I'm hearing really good things about Graham. But the most, in my opinion, 
a guy that isn't being talked about right now is JJ Hester because JJ Hester because in fall camp we were hearing buzz about him over LV Bunkley Shelton about the transfer he was standing out and people forget he gets that foot injury and he's out all year and and another thing people forget about both JJ Hester and LV Bunkley Shelton I think too many people are forgetting about them they did not enroll early they enrolled in the summer and and so now they have kind of a full off season with the team I I think both in LV Bunkley Shelton got on the field a couple times in the Cheez It Bowl. He he got he got a catch because it was like a six yard catch. But but he's more of a slot guy, is he not? LV Bunkley Shelton, yeah, he is. But JJ Hester, he's what six four six three, and he's got and he's a four four guy. So yeah. I mean, those two and those two are going to be really. Yeah, I think they have a chance to contribute. And then you mentioned it to me. The wild card in this wide receiver room is DJ Grant. I think we all know he can catch the ball. Saw that Nebraska game. Um, I, I just want to – and he was good in high school at receiver. So, it'll be but, interesting to see how much reps he gets and, you know, what he's able to do. And I think Emmett Jones even made a tweet about him a couple of days ago see, yeah. talking about he was blessed to get him in his wide receiver room. So, it'll be interesting for sure. And the one thing that's not talked about enough that I think we're all forgetting is there was – I don't know who put it out on Twitter at the beginning of winter workouts, but apparently Farouk is going to move into the slot. That's where he'll be to start the year. So I don't know if that was an Emma Jones choice or if that was a Jeff Levy choice. But, I mean, I think that makes room for more competition on the outside because you talk about it. I think they did that purposely because Graham was coming into the receiver room and they see there's a way where he's going to be able to play on the outside. Yeah, and Anderson and Gibson are both also outside guys. And I think in your ideal world, in your ideal world, Gibson, Anderson, and Farouk are your starting three wide receivers. And then you have Stoops, who's in a similar role last year. And those were the four guys, and that was an issue because they had Theo Weiss, Mims, Farouk, and Stoops, and really no one else did anything. So you would hope this year you'd see six to seven guys. And Emmett Jones, you you look through Texas Tech uh, – they're receiving uh, court for the past couple of years. He plays a good amount of guys. So um, it, it should be interesting to see how many guys are playing. I think that's my biggest complaint last year from the wide receiver room is that we were only seeing those same four guys trot out there, really those same three, and then Theo Weiss would come in a couple possessions. But I, I'd like to see more guys play. And also another thing that I would like to see change in this offense, obviously it's a reason why you – brought in Austin Stogner as well. You need to be able to throw across the mid, the middle of the field because last year they relied so much on vertically stretching people with Mims. And if Mims was not, was not able to get open deep, you saw at times, especially versus Oklahoma State in, in that game, they also, after the first quarter, they took away everything deep, played two high safeties, and OU's offense struggled. So that's why I think you need to play guys like Gibson and Anderson because they have that size to go up and get the ball in the middle of the field. Yeah, but my question with that, I mean, I, I agree with you on the middle of the field. It's got to be better. But my question to that is also how much of that is, is with quarterback. Mm. Um, yeah, with that, Dylan Gabriel across the middle of the field, he's not a tall quarterback. Um, throwing that pass is is sometimes can be more difficult just because the view from, from where he's throwing it, uh, you know, seeing everything. I, I, I'm just questioning that. I don't know. I, I'm not an expert on that. I'm just saying – is that a throw that Gabriel likes to make? You know what well, I mean? I, you I don't know. A good yeah. point. I, I do think some of that did have to do with, with Dylan Gabriel. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So right now, um, I just want to get everyone's prediction uh, for the three receiver spots. You have your uh, slot and then your two outsides. I want everyone to give me a two deep for what they think it, it would look, it will look like. Um, I think an OU football put out a graphic only 25 more Saturdays until the opener. So 25 Saturdays away, what do you think the wide receiver room too deep will look like? Well, the first thing is I think we need to take into account is with the depth in this room, there could be a chance someone decides to transfer out. Now, I doubt that happens, but obviously there's going to be transferring after spring ball's over, so we don't know. But if I had to say right now, on the first outside – I'll go with Anderson and Andrew Anthony backing him up. Slot, Farouk, and Stoops. And on the other outside, uh, Jaden Gibson, and I'll go J.J. Hester. But I think it's pretty up in the air between Hester and Graham. What about you, Brody? Uh, I, I'd go Farouk and Stoops in the slot. That That's how I see it. Um, and then 
the first outside receiver spot, I'd go Nick Anderson, and I'd probably back him up with Jaden Gibson. And then the opposite outside slot or outside spot, I would say Andrew Anthony, and then probably have LV Bunkley Shelton behind him. But the thing to me that's interesting with Anthony is that uh, he talked about in his press conference, Drake Stoops was kind of the guy. I think he said they put every transfer with someone like show him around or, or something like that. And he, I think he mentioned that they kind of want him to take that position on. So maybe they use Andrew Anthony in the slot. I don't know. Um, they could still bump for back out to the outside and then have Stoops and Anthony, but uh, Anthony Farouk and Anderson would be the three guys I think will be the first three wide receivers out there uh, come the game against Arkansas state. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to change it up a little bit, guys. Uh, Farouk, I'm going to say Farouk. Uh, Anderson, I agree with you on Anderson. Um, and then I'm going to go DJ Graham, guys. And the reasoning is the guy has now put in the work all offseason, okay? If y'all look back to his high school recruitment, the guy was a four-star and was recruited higher than, I, I want to say, yeah, and then, I, and, No, and then I, OU was the only school, I believe, that recruited him as a defensive back. All I know, but go, go look at his like, rankings. Where was he ranked compared to Mims, Brody? Can you pull it up? Yeah, coming out of high school, uh, he was listed as a uh, – he was the number 22 athlete in the state of Texas, three-star recruit. Okay. Um, and so then you check – let's see. Let's get up the – and I may be wrong on Mims. There was somebody that, that he was that, that he was. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll pull up the class. But yeah, I mean he he has all the tools to be. Oh, I mean I think a lot of people when they think about him at wide receiver, they they think that catch, uh, in in twenty, was it twenty twenty one? But I think I heard something from him where he he said he made that catch. But now people are the quarterback's going to be throwing the ball to him, and he's not having to go up and mm-hmm. catch it with one hand, but. Uh, what class was that? Class of 20? That would have been 19, right? 2020? or I, I think it would be 19. Marvin Mims was 2020, and he was a four-star recruit. Um, and then DJ Graham was in that same class, and he was yeah. also – he was a three-star recruit, um, uh, number 22 at his position. But you talk about guys he was ranked over – that would be – the wide receivers would be Trayvon West, who transferred, Brian Darby, who transferred. So, he – as an athlete – Yeah, so he's got, he's got the skill, and that's what I'm yeah. saying is he's got the skill. Now he's in a position he wants to be in, okay? And also, it's different being a receiver than a defensive back. He's – like you said, Brody, the ball's thrown to you. And it's all about – I mean, I think he's probably going to be a pretty good route runner from what I've heard just about his, his skill in high school. So I'm, I'm projecting that, and, and I'm, maybe I'm saying this and, and because of I've, because of the stuff with Gibson going on. I don't know. I, I just think that, that, that I think Graham may be that guy. And that's just, that's just me talking. Yeah. So that's just a projection. First team all district selection at wide receiver. Yeah. So. I mean, he can play, but also Gibson is a guy that we know can play. So we'll see. I think it's going to be interesting, but here's the thing. You have that competitive depth now. That's good. And will they will they uh, coach that correctly? I think with Emma Jones there, guys, is I think a lot of the t- things we, we we also weren't talking about last year's. Emma Jones is a very good developer of talent at receiver, and so what you're going to see is he's going to know how to play that room, get guys into rotations that maybe uh, and nothing against him. You know, Gundy got let go right before the season when they brought in Washington, but Washington wasn't he had not had that experience as being a wide receiver coach. Oh yeah. The Emmett Jones does as far as developing and far as getting guys into play and rotation. So that'll be interesting to see how that works. Yeah. And I think a complaint we all could have had with last year's wide receiver room was that the, it, it seemed like a struggle at points for the receivers to separate from man coverage because I partially, cause that could be because of Washington really had no experience of against any of the teams he was facing be he so basically whenever he was watching film on these teams it was like his first time except kale mm-hmm. gundy has been watching these teams these coordinators for 20 years and emma jones is what experience i mean he was a high school head coach at south oak cliff so let's see he was at kansas and texas tech is that right yeah 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 so i mean yeah it's gonna be a drastic change i think 
you, you talk about the depth thing with Jones or with you know, you look at his at his wide receiver room last year, he had one, two, he had eight guys who caught over twenty receptions. You put that in perspective to how many guys Oklahoma had who did that. And that number was just five. And and but two of those are Braden Willis and Eric Gray. Five guys over twenty receptions. Huh? So real so three receivers. Three. That's right. Yeah. So you would expect him to play more guys. And then kind of the final thing we have here with this wide receiver room breakdown on here. Um, everyone, who's your dark horse candidate to, you know, come in and contribute a lot for this team? I uh, I mean, I'll go. I mean, I think I probably already said it was Graham. I think yeah. I'd have to stick with that just for him to be in the starting rotation, in my opinion, would be a dark horse. Now, Gibson, I, I'm not going to say dark horse, but I, I wasn't kind of finished there with Gibson. Is I think Gibson, his his athletic specimen that he is, he could be the guy – that OU hasn't had in a, in a while. And I'm talking about the size. You know, somebody like a Malcolm – I mean, somebody that's just a big dude that can catch the ball and, and stretch the field. They haven't had that in a while. And so he could be that guy, and hopefully, hopefully he is. But I'm going to go with DJ Graham as my dark horse. Yeah, I mean, I got to go with J.J. Hester, I think. I mean, I probably already gave it away earlier when I was talking about him. I mean, I think the dude, though – Last year, I really do think he would have probably played over Theo Weiss if he was healthy. I mean, he's 6'3", 6'4", runs a 4'4", probably runs a faster 40 than Jaden Gibson. He's had a lot of collegiate experience. And then, like, I I've, I said this earlier, in the fall, we there was some buzz about him potentially playing more than Bunkley, Shelton, and Weiss before his foot. Or it was a foot or ankle, Eddie? Injury. It was a foot injury. Foot injury, but... Yeah, I mean, I think it's Hester. Yeah, and you talk about Hester. I mean, he uh, his uh, redshirt freshman year at Missouri in 2021, he appeared in 13 games. Uh, he had a couple starts um, against West Point. He had three passes for 30 yards, and then he had a career-high 79 receiving yards for against Southeast Missouri State. Um, in, in the year, he had 12 receptions for 225 yards and two touchdowns. And he so had to – Andrew Anthony. What? Sim similar to similar. Andrew, Anthony. yeah, and, and Hester, I think, has the tools as far as height and speed. So it'll be interesting for me. I, I, mine would be Hester, Bunkley, Shelton, or Anthony. But if I had to pick one, I don't know if it's a dark horse because I think a lot of people think Anthony will be pretty good. But I, I don't see him as just a depth guy. I think he'll be the wide receiver too, right behind Jalil Farouk. I mean, I, I really like his game, and I, you know, it was interesting that he didn't play as much as they thought he would at Michigan. But a lot of Michigan. Uh, fans and people have been, you know, nothing but positive with Andrew Anthony. So I definitely think that was a huge get, and he would be my dark horse um, yeah. candidate to to produce a lot for this wide receiver room. So, so guys, as we close here, I guess what we can say is uh, it's up in the air because all of yeah. us have different opinions. Mm -hmm. All of us, uh, we don't know enough about a lot of these receivers. I mean, other than Farouk and Stoops. Stoops and, I mean, you saw a little bit of freedom. A lot of it, you haven't seen any of these guys. So, it's going to be a very fun year to kind of see who kind of emerges. The spring game and the spring is going to be such fun to watch because that room is wide open. Mm -hmm. So, it's going to be awesome. So, so we're going to be doing these position groups uh, every few days or maybe at least once a week on these position groups. So, make sure you all uh, listen. Uh, make sure you all subscribe oh. to Sooner oh. Surge. Also, our new site, Surge Sports Network, is out. It's live. Uh, it's great content from all over the nation. So as we yeah. move to the SEC, we're going to have writers from all over the country calling, uh, covering SEC teams. Please go uh, follow us on that website. You can put your email address in to subscribe where you don't miss any articles. They all email to you, so get updates. So uh, please do that. And just thanks again for listening. Really appreciate it. And uh, looking forward to spring game coming up. So boomer. Boomer. Peace.